अरुणाम करुणा तरंगताक्षी धृत पाशांगुश पुष्प बाण Namaste. Welcome to the next episode in our ongoing series on Lalita Sahasranamam. So we're going to take up where we left off with Nama 105. Sahasrarambhujarudha. She has now reached her destination, the Sahasrara, where Shiva is waiting for her. Sahasrara is just below the Brahmarandra, an orifice in the skull that connects to the cosmos. The existence of this orifice has not been medically proved. Perhaps this is like the pores that exist in our skin through which sweat comes out. But one can distinctly feel the cosmic connection through this orifice. The union of Shiva and Shakti takes place at Sahasrara. The sadhaka, who all along was worshipping only the Shakti, begins to worship her along with her creator, Shiva. So, in the previous namas, we have traced the rise of the Kundalini through the six chakras. Huh? Like the I Ching says, every change has six steps and the seventh brings return. That's why there are only six lines in an I Ching hexagram. There's no seventh line because the seventh line is the ultimate. It's the Sahasrara, it's Brahman. So similarly, actually Sahasrara is not a chakra as is erroneously noted by many. <laughs> Sahasrara is actually the object, Shiva. And it doesn't exist exactly in the body, but between the body and the cosmic whole, W-H-O-L-E. <laughs> and there's also a whole, H-O-L-E, the Brahmarandra. Now, he says in the commentary that it's not been proved by medical science, but my Adi Gurus, 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 Guru, uh, my great grand guru, was present at the passing of a yogi who exited the body through this Brahmarandra. And it's like the top of his head blew off. He had so much prana stored up. Of course, this very rarely happens today, but it illustrates the truth of the existence of Brahmarandra. So anyway, the point is that Shakti meets Shiva at this point. This is the union of Shiva and Shakti. And so this is a, a separate, almost a, a separate chakra, uh, which we'll get into in the next namas, the next explanation, which is the source of all the nectar, Amrita. This Amrita is not a physical substance, but it's an energy that is created when the two uh, forces, uh, Shakti and Shiva, unite. And then this is this rasa, uh, this juice, is the product of their union. And of course, we can use uh, human biological sex as a metaphor, but actually this is something completely different. This is when the differentiated whole, the saguna brahman, meets the undifferentiated whole the Nirguna Brahman, 
or in plain language, Shiva unites with Shakti. So this is a very special thing, and we'll be going into this more in the next few namas. There are 50 letters in the Sanskrit alphabet. In some versions, it is 51, including ring. Based on these characters and multiplying this 50 by 20, the five basic elements, the five karmendriyas, five jnanendriyas, and five tanmatras, the product is 1,000. This 1,000 is said to be the number of psychic petals of the Lotus of Sahasrar. Please refer to more about Sanskrit letters at the end of Nama 833. Panchashat Pita Rupini. So this is very deep. And it goes back to our series on the Matrika, the system of the Sanskrit letters that contain and define all meaning and all language and all the possibilities of creativity. So the Sahasrara has a thousand petals. That's what Sahasra means. Sahasra and Ara means a petal. So Sahasrara is actually the blossoming of consciousness in all of its different varieties. How do we get 1,000? Okay, there's five basic elements, earth, air, water, fire, and space. Uh, so space is also an element. Without space, where would everything be? <laughs> so it's wrong to translate this ether. Uh, ether is an outmoded concept, but it should be space, akash. Next, five karmendriyas, the active senses. Two hands, two legs, and the mouth. Five jnanendriyas. Jnanendriyas are the knowledge acquiring senses. Two eyes, two ears, and the nose. And five tanmatras. The tanmatras are the objects of the senses. Sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. So these total 20. So multiplying the 50 letters by 20 different types of consciousness gives us a thousand. And that's the whole, the whole possibility of consciousness with an object. Of course, there's also consciousness without an object, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> Oh, and the explanation about the 50 letters of the alphabet in the commentary of Nama 833 is very extensive. You should read it. It's extremely interesting. And you'll find it linked in the video description below. Nama 106. Suddhasarabhivarshini. There is one Soma Chakra in the middle of Sahasrara. When Goddess Kundalini reaches this chakra, out of the heat generated by her presence, the ambrosia which is stored there gets melted, drips through the throat, and enters the entire nervous system. Soma Chakra is discussed in Nama 240, Chandra Mandala Madhyaga. The tantric interpretation of this ambrosia differs from this interpretation. Saundar Lahari 10 says, You drench the nadis, the nerves in the body, with the flood of nectar gushing through your feet. So the tantric understanding is that the goddess is independent in generating nectar. Huh? This spot, the soma chakra, is right here in between the Agnya Chakra and Sahasrara. So this is the place of the meeting of the union of Shiva and Shakti. And this is where the nectar is generated. That's why when I wear Bindu, which I forgot to do today, I always put it here. So most people put it here at the Agnya Chakra, but I don't think that's correct. It belongs in the Soma Chakra. More about ambrosia. 
The followers of Samayachara worship her through the chakras of Kundalini, beginning from Muladhara. Please refer to Nama 98, Samayachara Tatpara. Both the planet Moon and the Chit Chandra Mandala, Nama 240, at Sahasrara represent Sri Chakra, as both have similar qualities. Both shed nectar. Chit means foundational consciousness. Her lotus feet are deemed to shine in the moon region of Sri Chakra. Moon is the master of all medicinal herbs that are said to ooze the divine nectar. So this is deep again. Uh, all these names are very deep. The Samacharya worship is the worship through rules, rituals, and regulations. And this is the external worship of the goddess. And in the internal worship, she is worshipped in Sri Chakra, which is again located right here at the Soma Chakra. And this is her residence. This is where she lives. And the Sri Yantra, which you see in the logo of our channel, actually describes the form of Sri Chakra and how it is a mirror or a symbol of the entire cosmos. The entire creation is summed up in it. So this is a deep study in itself, which we're not going to go into here, but you can look into it if you like. I'll leave an, another link in the video description. Nama 107. Tadildatta Samaruchihi. She shines like a stroke of lightning. In the advanced stage of Kundalini meditation, one can realize the entire spinal cord glowing like a flash of lightning. Till this Nama, this kind of epithet was not used, but used here for the first time as she is now with her spouse. She shines like lightning when she is with Shiva. There are instances of comparing Brahman to lightning. Kena Upanishad 4.4 explains Brahman beautifully. It is like a flash of lightning. Just as lightning comes in a flash and removes darkness, self-realization dawns in a fraction of a second and removes the darkness of ignorance. And Maha Narayana Upanishad 13.11, part of the Narayana Sukta, says Vidyaloka, meaning a flash of light. Well, again, this is deep. <laughs> deep, deep, deep. This whole Sahasranama is giving all the deepest secrets of Kundalini, Tantra, Yoga, and self-realization. So, Maybe he's not experienced this. The, kund the writer of this commentary maybe has not experienced this kundalini energy because when it comes, it's like a flash. And it jumps from Muladhar all the way up to Sahasrara in just a fraction of a second. And the whole body, especially if you're engaged in tantric practices, especially tantric erotic practices. The whole body moves like a wave. And the interesting thing about this is that even though it can be like a violent motion, I've never experienced or heard of anyone becoming injured by it. So what this is really is when the path, the kaula path of the chakras is completely open from top to bottom and then she can jump pew, like lightning from the bottom to the top and it's the most exhilarating sensation it's the most amazing thing it's like an orgasm but it only happens in a fraction of a second but it's way beyond any ordinary orgasm which is why it's so short because if it were to continue for any length of time i don't think the body could take it Nevertheless, uh, there are many references to this flash of lightning being the flash of illumination or enlightenment and light and <laughs>
<laughs> so we're lightening up huh, with this lightning jump from the bottom to the top of the Kaula path. And this is the real enlightenment. When it happens slowly, it's permanent. To continue, therefore it is apparent that Lalitambika is referred to as Brahman in this Nama. This Nama fortifies the argument that both Shiva and Shakti are Brahman. Shiva is the Nirguna Brahman and Shakti is Saguna Brahman. Nirguna means without attributes and Saguna means with attributes. Shakti attains potency only if she remains with Shiva. Shiva also becomes inert without Shakti. This argument is strengthened by this Nama as she is compared to lightning only during her union with Shiva. Some texts use Tatilata instead of Tadilata. However, this difference does not alter the meaning. So we've discussed this especially in our series on the ontology of Shakti, that Shiva is inert without Shakti. And Shakti can't do anything without being connected with Shiva. So they need each other, like yin and yang. Huh? How would you describe yin without yang or yang without yin? It's not possible. It's like trying to describe light without darkness or up without down. <laughs> can't do it. So this is the fundamental duality, the fundamental tension that when it's resolved, results in complete self-illumination. Nama 108. Shakchakropari Sangstita. She is above the six chakras, starting from Muladhara to the Agnya Chakra. She is now at Sahasrara, which is not a chakra. As Sahasrara is above the six chakras, hence this Nama. There is another interpretation possible. It has been seen earlier that she is Brahman when united with Shiva. To realize Brahman in Sahasrara, one has to cross the lower chakras, all of which are associated with worldly acts. Sahasrara is above worldly acts. That is why she is said to be above these six chakras, meaning that Brahman is above the six chakras. Well, of course, she also acts through the chakras, and that is how the creation of the world happens. That is how the creation of the body happens, and that is how we experience the world. When she is moving through the six chakras in various different forms, and concentrations of energy in the different chakras, in the different states of worldly consciousness. Uh, then we experience the world as an individual self. And this is maya, illusion. But when she is united with Shiva in Sahasrara, then we experience the reality. The reality, of course, is Turiya, and Turiya is beyond the six chakras, just as Shiva is beyond, and she is also beyond when she's united with him. In that state, they become the one whole Brahman. And when we realize this, this is the summit of self-realization. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti. Aum.